and welcome to A Craft Along here with myself and Paul Church, who hopefully is in the building. I hope that the sound is good and, um, and welcome. It's seven o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. This was the time, despite the heat. It's hot up here. What about where you are? Paul, let me know if the sound is any good, would you? Because it's been a while since we've had a craft along or, um, or anything like it. These glasses are absolutely fitty. <laughs> sound is nice and clear. Now, the only thing I haven't checked, forgive me for doing this quickly, because the last thing you want is for me talking too loudly. Just let me check for a moment to see if I can, because sometimes when I get excited, there you go, see, I'm going to just bring it down a little tiny bit so that when I talk, it doesn't spike. There's nothing worse. Is that better? It's easier for me to turn me down and you to turn me up, so to speak. How's that? I think that's better. Okay, friends. Well, good evening. Come on in. Come on in and welcome to the party. One more question. I've got a fan going full blast behind me. Can you hear it? Let me just be quiet for a minute. Does it sound like I'm sat next to the M25, the traffic? Hi, everybody. Come on in. Nice to have your company. Have we got any new friends in the building? Or is it our old faithful craft along pyjama party people? Hey, eh? Come on, let me know. Hands up, all those who are new to the pyjama party with Barbie and Paul. I tell you what, it's very hot around my neck. What about you? Do you know what? I'm going to have to do this, even if it comes down. Because it's getting on my neck and it's really, I'm going to be fiddling with it all the time. No, you can't hear the fans, apparently. I can't hear the fan. Good. That's better. <sighs> hey. Nice to see you too, Helen. Nice to see you too. It's quiet, Barb. Thank you, David. Well, let's see. Nice cup of tea, bit of downtime. Come on in and then we can get started. Is everybody joining in or are you just hanging out with me because there's nothing else on the telly? Hey, who's right? Who's new? I'm new to the pyjama party, Barbara, but very hot in my craft room. I know, Linda. I can feel your pain, my dear. You want to get up here? It is like a sauna. You see, my little my little uh, studio is above the garage at home, and so you can imagine it's it's baking. But you know what? Hello from Florida, Patsy. Great to have your company too. So we've got friends from afar, we've got our regular friends, and we've got newcomers too. And why are we all getting together? Because I had the bright idea <laughs> when we were on Create and Craft last time, uh, not last time, but a couple of times ago, we released the first of a wonderful collection of Linda Williams' Christmas treasures. And if you will recall, we decided rather than pile 25 plates into the first show, we would release five a month over five months. And that's what we did. And the first five plates were released a couple of weeks ago. My hope is that you've all got your plates. Did you get them? I hope so. We'll be going like the clappers. Everybody should have the plates by now anyway, shouldn't they, Paul? Paul's in the building with you. 200 in the rooms. Well, I say, I say, I say. Welcome 200 friends. Um, you should have your, you should have your plates already. And if you haven't, I apologize profusely. The good news is that we can, we can record this and you can come back and catch up any other time. And do you know what? Honestly, if it's too hot today to craft, I really, really, I really, really understand. <laughs> Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Just... Find yourself a nice tipple, nice cold lemonade or something, 
and just watch. Hang out with us. Put your feet in a cold bucket of water. It's difficult to do that and do parchment at the same time. Don't you agree? Do you know, I'm sitting here and there's this cobweb attached to one of the lights. It's just wafting away in front of me. <laughs> oh, it's gone now. Right, another spider homeless. Okay, are you ready to rock and roll? What I thought we would do, just watching tonight, I get that jiggy jiggy. <laughs> jiggy jiggy. Seriously? It's okay. Hello, everyone. Very warm in Belgium. Good evening from Bedford. Belgium and Bedford. When are you going to get that in the same room? Hey? No plates yet. Patsy, I'm sorry to hear that. But are you in Florida? Because that could explain why. I like you. I've got a nice cup of Yorkshire tea. There you go, Teresa. Can't beat Yorkshire. Now, if you remember, on the launch hour, Linda Williams, unfortunately, she can't be with us this evening because she's up to her ears in crocodiles. I knew you said something else. She's up to her ears in crocodiles, trying to get out the door. And so I'm driving the bus myself tonight. But she assured me that next time, when we release the second set of plates, she will be the bus driver. And I get to watch and play along like you do tonight. I thought it would be a good idea if we go to this particular rather very, very beautiful um, piece of artwork that I used. It's a Linda, it's a Linda original. And um, Sarah, not Jiggy Jiggy, huh? <laughs> I know. I know I, I would, if it said Jiggy Jiggy, on your um, birth certificate, I would have to question that. Now, this was the beautiful piece of artwork that Linda prepared for us when we launched the first five plates. Okay. And I thought that this was a really beautiful one because it was so deceivingly achievable, wasn't it? Let's have a look on this camera so you can take a closer look at it. Right. So you see, whilst it was a real privilege to be able to launch these plates on television, and it always is a privilege to launch our products on Create and Craft, um, this is where we get to kind of put the plates through their paces, play with them, and, uh, and take a much closer, slower look at the artwork. Now, let's have a look. You see, because the main thing is all on this tiny little piece of parchment, this little oval. Everything else is really just garnish, if you like. So what I want to do this evening with you is focus on that centerpiece there. Now, if you could get a screen grab of that, go for it. I'll hold it as still as I can. If you're on your computer, if you, well, if you've got a Mac, just click Command 5, screen grab it, yeah? Or if you're on your tablet, all you've got to do is just take a photograph. You know how to do that. People underestimate us, don't they? Us mature people. We know how to do a screen grab. There you go. Ken Kilminster, welcome to the party. Just finished my fish and chip supper. Lucky Ken. Right, so that's what we're going to do this evening. I thought that would be a really, really nice one. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is, well, let's have a look. Let's deconstruct it, and then we'll decide where we're going to go. Okay. Right, I've got to be honest. It's been a bit of a scramble today, and I just got back. My dad's in hospital, so... <laughs> So I shot over to the other side of Tunbridge Wells, went and saw my dad, took him a great big pot of ice cream. He's doing much, much better. Thank you for inquiry. I know a lot of you have been asking. He's doing so much better, um, but I didn't want to let him down. So I ran over there, got him some ice cream, sat with him for an hour, got back in the traffic, got back over here at quarter to seven. So to be honest, um, you'll have to bear with me a little bit. I'll calm down, but I may be a little bit hyper to begin with. It's only because... 
I'm running around like a headless chicken. <laughs> but it's okay. Look, happy dad, happy daughter. Right. So what we need to do is deconstruct this. I think that is by far the most intelligent thing to do. All right. So I'm going to stand up for this. You don't need to. <laughs> All right, here we go. And and no, it's not awful to be in this heat. Pembury Hospital, air conditioning. I tell you what, it's deluxe. I tell you what, it's a lot cooler in the hospital ward. And they have single wards there. I can sit down again now. I just saw somebody say, oh, how awful to be in the hospital. Actually, it's really posh because they all have single wards with great big open doors big open windows and uh, every, every single, so you're on your own in the room with a great big telly. What's not to like, eh? He's okay. He's doing okay. He's a trooper. He is a real trooper. So let's have a look. If I, I won't come out, I won't pan in too closely for now. Let's have a look and we'll see. Let's start from the back. So at the back of Linda's masterpiece, we've got a large card. I think this is, I'd say it's an eight by eight. And then we've got a piece of our designer paper. So this one, Paul, help me out, love. This is um, D Paramore, and I think it's Toffee Apple, but I could be wrong. All right. I've lost my notes. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? I've lost my notes for this particular project. Right now, let's go to the next layer. So here we have a piece of white that is going to sit there. And then we've got this green color. Let's take this green color that we've pico cut, right, with our clever dies. And we pico cut it. Now, where did I put my pico cutting dies? You know what I mean when I say pico cutting dies, right? They're really brilliant. I am. Um, I've only got my prototypes here. This is the oval ones. Got square ones as well. Paul will load them up for you. They're really brilliant because what they do is, if you're new to this game, let me show you. If you look really closely at the edges, whoa, hang on a minute, a bit too. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, it's Pico cut. Can you see that? Where am I going? There. Look, see the edge? It looks like it's been Pico cut. So that, that really helps. So it means that you haven't got a pico cut by hand all the way around. So that's that's this piece here. They're really good picots. I think we've got them in square, we've got them in oval, we've got them in round, and I think we may have them in rectangle too, but I, I'm Paul will let you know. And it is toffee apple the paper. Cool. But hey, listen, this colour doesn't look the same as that colour. So this is called pear green, pear green parchment. For the uninitiated of, among you, what you'll see is one side is coated with the color and one side is dull. The duller side is the front, that's the back. So when we're doing any white work, we're working from behind, from the shiny side. That said, you can see the color's not the same. So what Linda did to achieve this beautiful moss green that she wanted, she took another, she cut another layer out. And this is, I think this is, sounds like petrol blue. Paul, help me out. Is it petrol blue, love? Something like that. Petrol blue. It's not diesel. <laughs> but you see, look what happens. When you take that blue, the blue on its own is a glorious color. When you overlap them, you get this moss. Cool, hey? There you go. So that's how Linda arrived at that lovely, who knew that you could blend parchment as well. That's how you get that color. All right. So then we'll go to the next layer, working our way back. I think it's good to deconstruct. So this layer here has got that on it, right? That's this layer here. Let's just pop that on there for the sake of argument. Then the next layer, and this is interesting. Check this out, right? Hopefully this won't get too... See if we can get the... 
uh, it should be able to. Maybe if I put a bit of green behind it, let's try that. See if we can let it settle. There, bang. See, did you know that you can use the um, the Pico dies to also uh, cut out card? Bingo. And yes, I've, I understand. I just caught out the corner of my eye. Somebody said I'm too stingy to do this trick, to, to use two layers of parchment. Well, the thing is with Linda, she's a perfectionist. And she, if she doesn't get the, she knows what green she wants, and that's what she will do. Right, so let's pop that one there. Let's get rid of that one there, because I'm going to need that in a minute. So then we've got that one there. Okay, deconstruct. Then the next layer is, of course, the layer that's got the, if you, if you like, they're like sophisticated photo corners here, aren't they? So then we've got the blue again to capture the same green. But, of course, we've only got to do the cutting out on one layer, right? So we've got the white, then we've got the blue and green, or if, you, if you're feeling frugal, just the green on its own. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Linda, right, like so. So then that's this layer, if you like. And then we've got the little one, and this sits inside this one. And that is the magic, in my opinion, of this whole project, is that all the artwork, hang on, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey, right? It all slots in here. Look, we'll, we'll learn how to do this. We'll get there. And then that goes in there like that. All right, we'll do that in a minute. But the interesting thing to me, right, is that all the artwork is on that little piece there. That's it. So if I slide this in now, you'll see that all the artwork is on that there. So to me, that makes this super achievable. That makes this super achievable. Okay. And that's where we're going tonight. All right, friends. Cool. Right. Piece of cake. <laughs> hey, piece of cake. Cup of tea, and then we'll get going. So I'm going to assume that you've cut your oval out or you haven't. And if you haven't, then don't worry about all the gubbins around the outside. Just get a plain piece of parchment and just trace out the little, just do the centerpiece. It doesn't have to be mounted. If you, if you haven't got the, you know, if you can't cut this out, don't lose any sleep over it. Just do this on a square one. Doesn't matter, honestly. What's important is that you have a go at this little tiny piece. So let me just make sure that I get to find the bits that I'm using when I need them. Because that's that's my favorite party piece is to then lose what I'm using. Switch to the overhead camera. I've done that, Paul. Right, so now. Let's take, let's take this and we're going to use, this is from the starter, uh, from the starter kit, the plate mate, and then we're going to slot in our uh, plate. And if you can read groovy in the top, then you're on the right side. That's for sure. And then what we're going to do is take our, our little piece of, I'm going to work on this little thing here. And I'm going to. I've got two lots of glasses. They're both equally filthy. One may be less dirty than the other. Let's have a look. Oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, that'll do. Right. Okay. Stronger glasses required. And then what we're going to do, because we're working on the back, so when you die cut, there is a back and a front, and you'll see where the emboss is. You'll know what's the back and what's the front. So take a tumble dryer sheet also in the starter kit. There we go. And let's just rub our tumble dryer sheet 
over this little piece because then when we go to use our tools, they will glide far more easily. So now we're going to decide where our little image is because all we want, look, all we want is the little girl because we're on the back, right? We want the little girl. We're going to ignore the trees. We've got her head in place. We've got, there you go. That'll do. Once you're happy with that, then you need groovy tabs. Have you got your groovy tabs? I'm just going to see if I can find some. Here we are. Groovy tabs. Okay. To hold it in place. Is everybody happy? Don't tell me if you're not. <laughs> Which oval did I use? Okay. Good question. I used... Uh, the fourth one from the middle for the actual centerpiece. So then I would have used the fifth one for the outside bit. Okay. So it's the fourth one for the center for the clear parchment, and then the fifth one from the center for the um, for the outside bit. And then guess which one for the white card? Go on. Go on. I'm not going to give any prizes away for this. That's right. Sixth one. There you go. So the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. All right. There you go. Put that somewhere safe. <laughs> right. Is it dripping down your back? It's dripping down my back. Right. Here we go. Oh, no. Ladies, we just glow, don't we? Apparently. Well, I'm glowing in pints right now. Put that like that and like, like that. And then we're going to stick this down so we can see what we're doing. That will do. Like so. And because I'm glowing so profusely, <laughs> I'm going to use my groovy guard. Because what that will do is it will stop me. Look, they're glowing. <laughs> Right. I'm going to use my starter. Let's have a look. What have I got here? I've got the one, two, and the three and four from from the um, from the starter kit. Okay. And what we want to do first is decide. And this is this is really key because what we're going to do is decide which parts we want crisp. Now I'm going to get up and come this way. Which parts do we want crisp white? And which parts do we want to color in like this? See the little girl? So this is the, the only thing is to, you've got to think this through at the beginning. If you want it to not have a white edge around the outside, then you've got to be very, very faint, right? So in fact, the only bits that we're going to use that are a bit crisper are the, are the sleigh. That's the only part is the sleigh. So what do we think? I would suggest that we do the, the girl first. Let's do the girl first because she's completely... Look, there is no line to her. But we're going to use the groovy plate to get that effect. So to get this fantastic color in, let's see how we do it. Well, the first thing we want to do is use, I would say, even go to the number three tool in the starter kit, the number three tool, because what we want is an outline, but we don't want to actually emboss it, right? So we'll go, we'll do the girl first, and we'll just do the number. Doesn't even feel like you're doing anything. I think we are, though. Right. So let's just do the number three tool, okay, I'm probably going, I'm probably pressing a little bit too hard, but I'm doing that because otherwise you won't see, any, we won't be able to see anything. I can't see what I've done and you can't see what I've done either. But let's just do the number three tool because it's really going to be um, a soft line, okay. Let's do that. 
you want it even softer, then use the number four tool. Because what we're looking for, right, if I show you what we're looking for, you'll see what I mean about, well, you can't see it. <laughs> All right? Look, I'll come up really close like that. So that, my friends, is what you're looking for. So from the back, it looks like that. From the front, look, you can't, you can hardly see it. But I think it's worth seeing where we're headed. Do you see? Right. So let's try again. I think I'm pressing way too hard, but let's have a look. Uh, at least I can see what I'm doing then. All right. I'll rather, I'd rather do that. Right. So I've got that much to do. Right. And then I'm going to do her hand as well. Right. Like that. And then the little boy as well. While we're on it, why don't we do the little boy as well? Okay. Let's take this one and let's put it here. And then you can see exactly what you're not supposed to be using the number one tool on. So let's do the little boy as well. And the other thing is, if you miss a bit, it's easy. Just relocate it and go again. But let's just get this little fella in place as well. Right, so that's him and his little hand, like that. And then all that is going to be on his hat. That'll do. Right, and then the rest. Right, now let's do the sled, this bit. Let's do this bit. Hmm, I don't know. Do you think? I'd probably be tempted to do that in hard, in, in white, but okay. I'm going to follow Linda's instructions. I'm not going to deviate. I'm not second guessing the master parcher worldwide, am I? Now that would be funny. Hey? Hey, hey, hey. Now that's going to be the, like, this is the soft stuff. No, Linda, I, I certainly wouldn't ever second guess Linda Williams. Right, so we've done all that. That's all we need. That'll do. And then, we'll, should we have a look first? <laughs> should I come in a bit closer? Moving a little closer, baby. Right, is that better? Oh, it's like a fridge in here. <laughs> Let's see, it's getting quite nippy. So now... Let's just lift this off and have a look. I can always relocate it. I want to see what I've done. Oh, yeah. All right. So you want to be able to see enough to be able to colour it in. Otherwise, you, it's redundant. You see? That's good enough. It's probably a bit, a bit crisper than it should be. But I'm not going to start splitting hairs. Right. So we'll pop that back. Relocate. That's easy enough. See, that's the magic of parchment, isn't it? You can, you can stretch it. That's how the groovy system works. Right, so now what we want to do is the, the, the white, the crisp bit, okay? Right, number one tool at the ready, the one with no stylus. Actually, we've made it quite easy for you. It does say one, okay? Don't want to be sarcastic, Barbara. Right, now, let's go slowly, because you can add it, but you can't take it away. Right. So what I'm going to do now is put that right in front of me so I don't make a holix of it. In fact, I've got a better idea. Why don't I put it with something behind it like that so we can all see it? There you are. Right. Think, Barbara. Can do that bit. And this bit. See, once you've done this, you can't undo it. So you best get it right. Once this is all in place, this is the transfer of the design, the beautiful, exquisite, immaculate Christmas treasure from Linda. Once you've transferred the line art, then it's just a question of, the rest is easy, really. Right, here we go. Do you like parchment art? Do you like groovy art? I, I really get into it when I 
when I start. It's quite lovely, actually. I find it quite relaxing. There you go. I'm just copying what Linda's done, really. I can't take credit for this at all. I could take credit for getting here. <laughs> and I can take credit for switching the machines on and the cameras. <laughs> but that is it. Other than that, I'm just copying this. <laughs> and that is actually quite... Um, that should be quite comforting for anybody who's new to this, you know. The bottom line is, if I can do it, you can do it. We've always said that in the shack as well, haven't we? Hey, If I can do it, you can do it. And lo, they could. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? There you go. Hey, Shveti. <laughs> That's not bad, is it? 263 people in the room. Well, I'll be. That's brilliant. So when I take this away now and I have a look at what I've done, it looks as I just thought, how did she get it around the other way? And then I realised it was in reverse. Right. So now we've got it. We've got exactly what we want. You see, this is the thing about when you, when you decipher or deconstruct the cards, it's just spending a little time sort of like with me now. I'm lucky because I've got the different layers. Linda's given me the different layers. But when you actually deconstruct a card and you have time to, to just break it down into its smallest components, you realise that it really isn't that hard, right? So we've got that, that's it. And now what we're going to do is start working on, I would say, we're going to do the stippling next. So the stippling, let's have a look. We'll, we'll do the colour afterwards and then we'll do the stippling. What is stippling, I hear you ask? You see the, have a look at the, around the hat and the muff and the around the cape you see that white it's kind of it looks fluffy you see that there you go i'm going to show you how to do that now so what do we need right to do that let's use there's a couple of little tricks so what we'll do is get rid of this now that's that's it for now that'll do for now we, we're we're going to need the plate again when we go to do this bit and this bit but for now we'll just stick with this okay let's just keep going for a couple of hours shall we right so we're working from the back and we're going to stipple so what do we need to stipple we need a one needle tool a one needle tool and bold or fine doesn't matter and and we need something that's uh, like a bit of card like a cornflake packet or something i just took a card like that and then i just did that with a sharper pen over the so that when i'm when i'm doing this i can see what i'm looking see if i can't see it can see it right so you want to be able to see what it is you're stippling now one of the things that helps to see what it is you're stippling working on the back is to take a ball tool now let's see you could take a big ball tool you could take a huge ball tool it's up to you if you've got them if you haven't just use your number four from the starter kit right because these are only small areas and what we need right is actually a soft mat underneath so we could use a pink one have you treated yourself to this yet i've got to say it is worth I mean, in the starter kit, the black mat is soft on the back, isn't it? You can use that. No problem. Um, in fact, if you do use it, then the trick is to get a poly bag. You've seen me do this a thousand times. But I also know that we've got a couple of newcomers in the building. So I need to show you this. See, this is the, the soft. This is the, the back of that one. What have I got on there? 
spiders. <laughs> right. So this is the hard side for colouring in. This is the soft side for white work. Okay. If I were to go on here as a novice and start stretching that, I might go too, I might do too much. So the trick at that point is to take a poly bag. And what do I mean by poly bag? I mean a bag like this that anything comes in. You just want a piece of this plastic, right? And then you can you can use the poly bag. Hang on. I'm just gonna cut one up so you see what I mean. I only need a little bit. I don't need lots of it, right? Like that. That'll do. So I've got a bit. See what that does is it acts as a bit of a resist. So it means that if I'm get that out of the way, if I'm gonna do a bit of white work, see if I don't use the poly bag, there's no resistance, and, it, and if I press too hard, chances are I'll stretch it way too much. If I go in here. Let's do her cape. And now and I can go in like that, you see, just to add a little bit of white to where I want to stipple from the back, working from the back, right? The back being the side that is not raised. If your sled is raised, you're on the front, right? So you can use your your black mat with a bit of uh, plastic like that. Or if you're feeling flush, you can treat yourself to a pink. What are they called? Um, what are these called? Excellent. <laughs> They're called excellent, aren't they? Something like that. Or exclusive. What do we call these, Paul? Excellent mats or exclusive mats? Something like that. Begins with an E anyway. You wouldn't believe we own the company, would you? Right. See, so these are very forgiving because for, for the heavy-handed of you, they work a lot better. So now we can just gently put a bit of white work. Again, just remember to work from the back, right? And you'll find it's a lot, there you go. Just do a bit like that, a bit round her boots. It seems ridiculous doing a snow cape, <laughs> wintry season. An embossing mat is called excellent. There you go. I knew it had some. <laughs> excellent, there you go. So use the, the embossing tool to lightly stretch the parchment where you're going to put the white stippling. Right, his hands, he's got white gloves on, so she, and the head bit. Right, okay. Right, so we've done that, we've done that. Then we're going to do his, his hat around the top again. It's enough to make a difference when you go to stipple in a minute, if you can actually see what you're doing. The, bo the bobble on the end, that'll do. That will do nicely. Thank you. And then we had a hand. Is this a hand? Yeah. So we've got a hand there. And then we've got a little hand up there as well. But for some reason, I missed, I missed his... Let me get that plate back. I seem to have missed his arm. Did he have an arm? What's going on there then? Oh, I missed his body. No, there's a little tiny arm bit that I missed. Well, the good news is that you can go back and you can take your number three tool because it will be a bit of a challenge if I don't put his arm in. I won't see what I'm... Kind of. That'll do. Right. So we've got his, his hand for tool. That'll do. That'll do. So we've got his hands. Then you've got his coat. Got that, got that, got that, done that. That's it. We've got our booties. Easy. Right, so now I can see what I'm stippling. I'm not sure about his hand. <laughs> Hey, I didn't say I was an expert. I just said I was going to hang out with you for a couple of hours, all right? I've got, I, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a rough idea where we're headed, all right? I did check with a sat-nav, a.k.a. Linda Williams, before we started. <laughs> uh, right, come on. 
stop larking about. What we're going to do now is the stippling. So we leave our pink mat away because I don't know if we need that anymore now. We'll check it out in a minute. One thing at a time. I think that's the thing about this. It's about taking it one step at a time. Right, you ready? So what we're going to do now is stipple away. Right, so what you're going to do, hang on, it says something on the front of my, why, hang on a minute. What does that mean? Close. It's okay. The computer is starting to talk to me. I don't know what it wants. Right, stippling. We're going to do the stippling. And I'm going to use my mat. There you go. And what we're going to do is this. So you take your, maybe if I use this, then you can see it from the side. And what you're doing is you're stippling like this. You're just going like that, working from the back. And the more dots, it's obvious, the more dots you put in an area, the whiter it will get. Okay, so let's do her. Let's do her hat bit first. And um, my suggestion is just just saying right that you start like this. Hold the pen quite tight down the bottom. You got more control than if you hold it up. If you hold it up here, you could be just stabbing randomly. Okay, so hold it quite tight to the bottom, and then hold it sort of perpendicular, upright, right. And then all you're going to do now, and it's not a race. You don't have to. It's not. You don't have to use it like a pneumatic drill. But my suggestion is that you go round the area, go go round the area first that you're going to actually stipple, right? And then fill it. Here we go. Do you want to have a look what it looks like before we carry on? I found it a lot easier to go around the outside. You see, because we've done a little bit of um, embossing, white work, see how much easier it is to find what it is you're actually doing. Look, now let's have a look what it looks like on the front. I say, I say, I say. Right, I love it when it works. Let's see. All right, I think this is a better camera for this job. If I stand up, let's go up a bit further. So that didn't, that's not hard, is it? Can you see? And the more I do, the whiter it will get. And if you touch it on this, if you touch it on the front, it's raised, but it's not prickly. It's just uh, furry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Round we go again. Why don't we do this? Why don't I come in really tight? Let's move in a little closer. Come in really tight, and let's do all the all the bits that we we want to stipple. Okay, you up for this? Is anybody still there? Or is it just me on my own now? Report. <laughs> hey, right, stippling. Come on, round the area that you you prescribe. You've already done the white work on it, so do the round the area like that. Right, rank. Let's go to that camera. And then we're just going to start, right, and then round we go, and then fill it. So you go round the area. You can be quite precise about that, like that. But it's a really nice way of getting an, a, a lovely texture. It's not smooth, it's stippled. <laughs> you, 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 I do the same thing with a black pen. It's like um, pointillism. And if you want it to be whiter in a certain area, I'll show you a little trick in a minute. Let's look at what we're doing, though. So we've got this front bit as well. So we'll go around the front bit because we've got bits at the front and bits at the back. So let's do the bits at the front. Right, so you go round with the dots. So think about the logic of this, right? We're working from the back. 
we've got something black at the back behind it underneath it so that we can see what we're doing we stretched it very lightly which made it white which of course helps you see what it is you're doing M much better than trying to figure out is it his hat or is it his head or is it his face you know if you've already established it it makes it so much easier is anybody joining in with me or are you all just have you all just got your feet in a bucket of water and watching the poor old girl <laughs> devil away on her own hey it's quite cool up here now it's nice and let's have a look what we got going on here right so this one here is in front of that one there so let's just change the game a bit. This is going to be whiter, isn't it? So we can stipple it a bit more. And I've got another trick in a minute as well. I don't mind stippling. I find it quite, um, quite therapeutic, really. Let's have a look. I remember Linda and I went to Slovenia a few years ago. We were doing workshops. She was doing little puppies, like fluffy puppies. And there was a, quite a lot of stippling involved in, there, I think, like scratching and stippling to get the furry effect. And these women were going at this puppy. <laughs> they were doing this puppy for about three hours, four hours. And they'd only done the nose. They'd only done the nose. And I was like, I was obviously, this was early days. This was early on in my partridge career. <laughs> so three hours for a nose. <laughs> you must be kidding me. <laughs> I could have knitted a jumper at that time, but I can't knit. Yeah, it was funny. Now, the thing is, you see, have you got a white pencil? Have you got a white pencil? Let me check. I bet I have. Oh, I have. Have you seen my... Look, I hate to... Sh that ceramic envy here. You ready? Look, I actually made myself... I usually give all this stuff away. But I actually made myself a matching set. Look at this. How cool is this? Look, I've even got one for me now. I know, I'm getting there. I um, I keep saying, I'm going to make loads of these and then I'm going to sell them. And then I don't because I haven't got time. But you understand. Anyway, I think they're pretty cool. These ones have got a really nice crackle. Can you see the crackle on there? Isn't that super? Look, see the crackle? Fabulous. Anyway, be that as it may, all I wanted was a white pencil because we can use a white pencil, you see, to um, accentuate what we've done. I bet we can. Makes sense to me anyway. Let's have a look. So if I turn this over now, you're right with this or you're bored with it. Right. See, so this here needs to be white to be able to. So why can't I, if I do that there on the back? I bet I wonder if that will make it pop to the front. Uh, hey, hey, what did I say? Right? It's cool, isn't it? So this is going to be at the front as well. Right? So we can add a bit of white to our stippling from behind. Check it out. So that's white, that's white. Now you're going to say, well, what's the point of doing the stippling? Well, <laughs> ask Linda. No. It gives you a really beautiful texture. But all I'm saying is, look, you can, hey, you get what I'm saying here. You can add a little bit of whiteness where you want the white. Yeah. Got a little bit more stippling to do yet, friends. I think this is pretty cool anyway. Right. So what we've we got now, we've got, bit more stippling to do there 
we've got a gap here and this is going to be at the back so I wonder if we leave a little line if we leave a line whether it actually looks like you can always fill it if you don't agree afterwards but I wonder if we do just have a little bit of shade that like positive and negative and all that and my fingernails terrible honestly I didn't even have time to clean my nails I'm embarrassed that's because we've got the retreats coming up in a minute as well it's all right <laughs> I'm just cleaning my nails quickly we've got the retreats coming up on Sunday we're setting up and we've got about well, we've got our annual clarity retreat. So today we've been going like the clappers, filling all the crates and the boxes. Sorry about my nails. That's embarrassing. Um, we've been going like the clappers, filling all the boxes, haven't we, Paul? Let's have a look. What have I got going on there? Yeah, we have. Yay, look. What about those bits there? And... Um, and so my nails got all dirty because we were in and out of bread bins and boxes and ink and 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 a lot of the stuff <laughs> we had to test all the ink pads and that because a lot of the stuff it hasn't seen the light of day in two years we haven't had any workshops or anything have we haven't done anything because we haven't been able to see that foot's missing there i'm gonna have to use my imagination there right round we go Focus on what you're doing, Gray. Fluffy bits. There. Have any of you got the uh, Marina Fedotova, the poppets? I know you have. Well, some of the wintry ones, the angelly, you know, the little fairies and that, they've got little capes on. They, they're wearing little little winter capes. They're beautiful, the Marina Fedotova images. And this stippling trick, especially with a little bit of white work first, so you know what which bits you're doing, and then a little bit of stippling, and then with a white pencil to get the light and shade, it looks absolutely breathtaking, just saying. Especially if you use it on darker parchment. The, uh, but the, the printed ones, they come already colored and they're just exquisite when you do this trick, okay? I've seen some artwork and I've tried it myself. It does look lovely. Right, so let's have a look. She's looking pretty good to me. Little boy next. How are you getting on? Right, so I need to make sure. Isolate the bit you're gonna do Right, so I'll just go to that camera. So I'm going to go around the bit that I want to do. That's there. And then I'm going to do his, um, what's it called? The the pom-pom at the end. All right, and you hold it up perpendicular and round you go. I told Dad that I was, I said, oh God, I can't stay long, Dad. I, I can't, I can only, st I just wanted to take him some ice cream, really. I said, I, I, I'm doing this um, craft along. He said, like you used to do in the classroom. I said, that's right. But instead of it being on telly, it's, it's on, um, on Facebook or on YouTube and that. He said, how many women? How many people? I said, I don't know. A couple of hundred. But I said, even if there's only two, I've still got to be there. He said, you absolutely have, Mrs. But it was nice to be able to tell Dad about it, really. Tomorrow morning I'll tell Mum. All good. So that's his little hand. His hand's looking a bit ropey on mine. <laughs> He's pointing his finger. Hang on, I'll make it look even... There you go. It's that finger, he's going... Looky, looky. Hang on. There you go. Got a little mitten. 
Come over this way a bit, Gray. So it doesn't take so long, does it, when you get it going? And if it's not working that well, you've always got the white pencil trick if you want to add a bit more. Stipple, stipple, stipple. I reckon. And then I think, right, that you can really get quite a sharp edge. Do you see what I'm getting at? In a minute, I'm going to pierce it so much it will fall out. <laughs> Has that ever happened? No. <laughs> can you imagine that? You make a really, you go all the way around really, really tight now, right? And then, <laughs> and then it falls off because you've perforated it. No, you can't. Not possible. I reckon this will do. Let's have a look. Pretty good. Hey. Okay. Oh, what about all this lot here? Okay, well, while we've got it out, we might as well do it. So this little hand and this little muff, right? Here we go. So this is the hand. And this is the muff. I think also what's key is that you don't rush it. You know? Who here is a traditional parcher and who here in the room with me with us with Paul and me who is a card maker like a stampy inky card maker like me hey eh? because us card makers we tend to finish a project in one sitting don't we you make a card you don't leave it till the next day. You finish it, don't you? And I think one of the things that I've had to learn about parchment art, this type of art, is that you can't rush it. You have to give it time. Right, now. And, and that's important. It's important. I think I've got everything I need now. Yeah. Got his two hands, got his hat, got his bauble. I think it's important not to rush it. That's all I'm saying. And I think another thing is, is uh, there has to be a kind of an, an element of acceptance that it takes as long as it takes. If you want it to be really lovely. I've watched Linda, you know, and I've watched the way she works. And it's immaculate what she does. It's, it's, it's the time that she invests in her art that makes it so exquisite. You know, when she does something like this, she'll take a long time over that. And we are this evening. And if we, if we only do the colouring on the cape and we don't get to all this, it doesn't matter if we don't get to all this stuff. What's important is that we get that colour in lovely. Are we in agreement on that? We don't want to rush through that, you know. doesn't make sense to me. doesn't make sense. I'd rather get it right. Have a look. Are we in agreement on that, though? That we may not get to the outside bit? Because that's pretty... I'll show you how. I'll show you how to do this bit. It's not hard. But for me, I think we got together to do the colouring. Question from Donna. Can you colour first and then stipple? Well, if you colour first, you can. You really can. You can do one or the other. But if you colour first and you use oil, Dorso oil, like we're going to, then the chances are that you'll, you'll go into the area where you're going to stipple. If you're going to dry colour, I, th I just feel unless I've got it completely wrong, I would say that I would stipple first and then colour in, only because I can, I've established where the white is now. But I don't think, I don't think there's a strict rule. I just thought that it would be less risky. So stipple first and then do the colouring. But, you know, like I say, I'm no expert. You've got to start somewhere. 
Might as well start with the old um, the muffs. I think I'm right. Now, let's start on the... Should we do a little bit of the colouring? Start on the back, right? We can always... You can always... I'll tell you what you can do, Donna. You can always go back in and do a bit more stippling afterwards. Now you've sort of... A, you've got the game plan, okay? And I'm sure that there are people that know more about this than I do in the room right now. So if you've got a better idea, without completely discrediting me, <laughs> let us know what you think, okay? Right, now let's have a look at this colouring. In order to do the colouring, we can use, if we want to get the colour, that Linda, Linda's used, I asked her specifically, and I actually wrote them down for you. She used polychromos, okay? I wrote them down. 278. This is for the, the, the real seasoned parches that have got all of these, right? 174 polychromo, hang on, like that. 174 and 278. 174 is the first one. That's called chromium green opaque. And in German, I love the German name, chromoxidgrün stumpf. <laughs> stumpf. I didn't know that stumpf was opaque. I think I prefer the word opaque. Right. And then 278, the darker one, is chromoxidgrün Oh, that's it. Stumpf, not stumpf. So it's chrome oxide grün, oxide grün, and chrome oxide grün stumpf. So it's 174 and 278. According to Linda, that's what she used. Okay. If you're, let me tell you, if you're using pergoliners, then you can use the B pencils and the closest you're going to get on the B pencil is B6. B6. That one. B6. Okay. That'll do the job. B6. And if you wanted to mix it a little bit, if you're using, you could use B6 and B15. Those two. There. Okay, B6 and B15. But I tell you what, if you don't mind, I'm going to go B6 and B15. I'm going to use what Linda's got because I'd really like to see what it looks like with these colours. So 174 is the lighter one. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go on the back with 174 and then we're going to do the shading with a darker one. That to me makes total sense. Right. And then we'll um, so we'll do that. We'll use dorso oil if you've got any. We'll do a bit of that as well, a bit of dorsing. And then we'll go on the front. And that's how we're going to get this superb coloring effect. How do you feel about that? Right. OK, working on the back and we'll use this one. Let's go for it. So we're just going to use this green on the back and we're going to color this let's get this color in kind of layering yeah and you need to work so you can't see what you're doing on white so you need to work on on the black matte really hard surface though okay and then we'll let's get these colors in let's get this going here right on the back to start with. So now we've done the stippling. We can see where we've got to go as well, can't we? So let's do this. I don't think we want to put too much down. Maybe I'm being a bit ginger. But I do know when I use the dorso oil, that will blend it quite a lot. So I'd rather do two layers, if you know what I mean. We've got that colour down. So 
Look at that. Yeah. Where else are we going to put? Let's just do all the green bits. Green on her leg. Green in there. She's got green feet. Green booties. Let's do that as well. Yeah. You see a little bit through there, can't you? But don't forget, we're doing the front and the back here. Okay. We're doing the front and the back. So I'm not concerned about that. And we can go over the white. See what happens if we go over the white? Ah, you know what happens? You get a shadow quite like that too. Okay. See, that's it. It's a little bit gritty, isn't it? That's all right. I haven't finished yet. It ain't over yet, people. We haven't even started. Right. Bit of green. See, I'm quite good at colouring in on card. But I'm learning as well on this stuff. I just know, I know the theory, you know. Let's get, so here we've got his hat. We might as well, we're, in, we're on it. We might as well do it all in one sweep, hey. So let's get his hat going. Anybody got another question for me? I'm not saying I can answer it. <laughs> Give it a go. Right. Got a green, lovely, sumptuous green blanket. Got some, got a bit of hands going on. That's all right. Right. I reckon this is going to be fabulous when it's done. So what about if we do this, right? Well, I mean, it's not finished yet, but I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> it's not quite the same, but we're getting there. Hang on. On the back first. Now, we've done that. Now, we're going to use some dorso oil. Should we try that trick next? Have you got some dorso oil? Right. Okay, let's just do it. Okay. Dorso oil. We need a makeup sponge or as we call them, a spot on sponge. Get one of them because it's easier for dispensing. Then we need, I know, why aren't we selling them? It's a long story. They're getting made. They're in the pipeline. Don't ask. Don't ask. We got really badly let down. Don't want to talk about it. But they're coming. I'll tell you what, though, in the meantime, what we do have is the nibs. The nibs we have. And you can hold the nib and you can work with a nib, right? You can work with a nib without the holder, okay? Um, if I had a pound for every time someone's rung the office and said, why can't I buy these? I could go to the Maldives. But there you are. Do you not think that we would be selling them if we could? But now, now we're that far away from back in production. We really are. And once we own the rails on it, it will never happen again, touch wood. Right. So what we need now is a little bit of um, dorso oil. I think I may come out a little bit. Let's see. Because I'm thinking that I'm so close up now. Let me come out. You can't actually see what I'm doing, can you? Right, let's have a look. So take a bit of dorso oil. We'll put a little bit on there like that. Can you see that? Don't want too much. So what happens is if you use too much, then it, it works as it brilliant as a getting rid of colour. I learned that to my dismay on live TV when I was doubling up with Tina Cox <laughs> and this is when I learned this trick and I, pour, I, I poured on the, the dorso oil and having coloured in this piece meticulously, as meticulously as you can on live TV, I then proceeded to lift all the colour off because I used too much dorso oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do is just a tiny little bit and you'll see immediately how much there is on there. Look, you can see 
I don't even want to go again because it would just be this, uh, then I'm going to do it again, right? So let's see. Let's start where it doesn't matter so much. Right, down here. Right, Donna. You see, now I've got a load of control over the oil. And let's just go like that. And you'll see that the oil, it blends. I'm going to go all the way around like that. And let's see what the difference is between where we put the oil and where we didn't. Shall we? Yeah. So you can see where I'm putting the oil. This is the first layer. There you go. Right. Oil, no oil. Gritty, smooth. Okay. But you can't, you've got to do it on the black because you can't see what you're doing. So you want a bit more. Look. Doop. And then you get, look, you can see how much comes off. Right. Like that. Okay, not too much. You can always add it. Right, little circular motions. I bet all the traditional parchers are climbing their walls right now watching this. <laughs> well, can I just tell you that I'm self-taught <laughs> with a little bit of help from Linda? But that's okay. I get the result. Sometimes... I think it's not bad if you haven't read the rule book, you know. Because if you haven't read the rule book, you figure it out, don't you? Like, I don't have a degree in art. I never went to art college. I don't know the rules. And if you don't know the rules, you can't break them, see. I think sometimes... Rules can be quite limiting. If you don't know what you're... I'm not saying if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, right, then you can do... It's, it's open canvas. It's like blank canvas, isn't it? Here we are. So I'm just using... I'm not sure what's going around, going on with his head there. I think we might need a little bit more... Oh, yeah, okay. So you just push it into place, look. It's obvious, isn't it? So the oil helps you push the green. Now, it, yeah, I was worried about it. It looked a bit weird. Didn't have the right... Now I do. How are we doing? This is quite nice. So then you let it dry, dry, patient, okay, I think. We'll let this dry and then let's have a look at the back of Linda's. Well, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Doesn't look that different to mine. Mine looks a bit darker, Linda. Uh-oh. Well, there's an answer there. <laughs> I could just lift a load off. Maybe I didn't, maybe I used too much. Oh, maybe I haven't finished yet. And let me tell you, to compare is to paralyze. So let's not compare. Let's just do our own thing. My green's going to be a little different to this green. All right, so we've done that. Right, now that needs to be dry. Well, that won't take long in here, I can assure you. <laughs> because then we're going to add another layer. And I think what I'll do is, let's have a look on the back of Linda's. Yeah, she definitely used the dark green on there for the shadow. Right, should we get a dark green? And have you got a sharpener? So I think we might need to sharpen this one. Let's have a look. You see, the thing is that all my stuff, my stash, see, the good news is I'm not attached to the table, so I can have a little walk around. Let me do this. I'm going to, I'm just going to, yes, that's fine. You can have a look at that while I go and look for my sharpener quickly because here it is. It's in the box ready to go to Ditton for the retreats. Ah, yes. Right. So I think what I'll do is 
I'll just lightly sharpen this one that I'm going to do the shading with. Nice. Okay, ready? Let's have a look. So now we've got that, now we're going to add a bit of shadow. So first of all, let's just think shadow. I'm going to put a bit of shadow along there. Always working on the back. Let's just do this. Right, and then we're going to put a little bit of shadow where the white line is. And a bit of shadow around the bottom where the uh, stippling was. Right, and then in here, we're going to make the, the, the cloak, the cape. It's looking quite good. Right, now up here, we do need a little bit of help, Barbara. So let's get, this is just like shading in any kind of up here. This is just basic shading, isn't it? You just got to kind of. Get your get your eye in really, and the white lines from from the groovy plate, even though they're faded, they give you a good. See, we could do a little bit of. There we go. And maybe in the back at the bottom of the the hat. This is not a hat, is it? It's a hood. <laughs> so I love a hat. There you go. I tell you what, Donna, the more I do this, the more I'm convinced that I definitely needed to do the, the stippling first. Now I'm doing it, you know. Is that a shoulder? Yeah. Okay, we'll call that a shoulder. Let's have a look on this side. Let's take a piece of clean card and see. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. It's not that different, Linda. <laughs> I haven't done the front. Yeah, look. Okay. So I reckon at this point, I don't think I want to blend that though. I think I'm going to leave that like that as a shade, a shadow. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is go to the front. But first, we need to make sure that we're getting all the shadow that we want wherever we need it on the back. Let's have a look. See, it's not bad. Right, and then we'll just do some light flicks from the ball and then round the top of his hat. So we don't want to, I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to use the dorsal oil again. This looks quite good. I quite like this as the front. <laughs> so the thing is, this isn't going to sit on white. If it was going to sit on white, you'd be shocked. But it's not going to sit on white, is it? It's going to sit on green. So why don't we, why don't we get our green thing out so we know what it's going to look like when we mount? See, this is going to look completely different. Now that is looking more encouraging, isn't it? Hmm? But now we're going to the front. So exactly what we've done on the back, we're going to do on the front now. You ready? So we're back to the light one again. 174. And I'm going to sharpen it. I see this beautiful colouring work a lot on the samples from the design team and I I think I want to do this right now this time we're going to do exactly the same on the front as we did at the back so we've already done it once but in order to get the right area it's not hard right now we're going to go in again make sure you've got the light one and it doesn't matter if you cover up the there is not supposed to have a white line is it so don't think twice about, you know, normally you have to worry about covering up the white lines. 
but that's exactly what we're going to do. If you've got a white line, now's your chance. There you go. So we're just going to add a bit of this nice green to the front. <sighs> Mind your stippling grey. Right. Green. Just do a whole coat of green on here. Yeah? Is anybody doing this with me or am I the only sucker in the room? <laughs> Hold it to the light so you can actually see what you're doing. Yeah. And the other thing is you've got to remember, you've got to have a bit of focus on this. Let's have a look. Okay. And then we're going to do the, the legs as well. Leg, there's another, and then little feet. Right. And this one. I reckon this would be lovely. Right, come on, let's just do green. The light green. It's not that light, though. On the whole thing. On the front. Now, this is where you've got to be a little bit careful because you don't want to go on the sled with the green. Okay? So here, don't do that. Just stay within. Need a sharp pencil for that little game. Right, stay within that area. Looks a lot darker than yours, Linda, if you're listening. But it's okay. We're going to get there. Now we're going to do dorso oil on the front. We're going to smooth this out, I reckon, on the front. Another layer of dorso oil. Let's go for it. Okay. Don't want too much. Right. And now we're going to go for the front. And then when we've done the front, we should see a result. And then we could put the shading in with a really sharp, A really sharp colored green. Yeah, I reckon. See when the light hits it, you can see where the you can see where the dorso oil is going. I can from where I am here. I can see exactly where the dorso oil is. Now I'm going to start at the front of the cape and I'm just going to work my way backwards on it. So I'm working on the front now, see? So I'm optimistic that when we do this, This will smooth it out nicely. That's the theory anyway. Hope so. Do you ever wish something was pre-recorded rather than live? <laughs> Paul, how are we doing? Are you still awake? <laughs> this will be all right. I promised you that we would get this done and we will. Now. So that's the front. He's this is doing all right, you know. Right, we want to get this lovely. Now we've got to be a bit careful because because right, let's get a bit more going to get a bit more oil. Right, clean oil. That's it. Right, because I've got to stay clean now in where the where the white line art is. So we're going to go really carefully where the line art is. That'll work. 
Nice. These nibs are certainly... They certainly do the job, don't they? Let's go over the white slightly. Because we seem to have a bit of a white line. Mind you, so does Linda. So let's not get too hung up on it, Gray. <laughs> I reckon we're doing all right here, friends. You know? Okay, so we've done that. And now we're going to get the shading. So that needs to dry. That won't take long. One, two, three. 240 people. I reckon you've all nodded off. Oh, stretch my neck. Okay, now we need to take that darker pencil. I hope I did use the lighter one there and not the darker one, which is about to find out. Right, and sharpen that dark one. 278 or the darker one from the pergoliners. Let's get it real tight now. That's another thing I noticed. Linda, when she works on the front of the parchment doing the detail like this, she does a flick, she sharpens it. She does another flick, she sharpens it. She must race through these polychromos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you ready? But the thing is, I've got to work on the black because otherwise I cannot see what I'm doing. So now we're going to get the shading going again. Start where you're comfortable. And let's see what happens when we do this. Right, on the front. Right, here we go. So we've got a bit of... <sighs> I reckon this is going to be all right. And then we've got a bit of a round the sides here who's, a, who's one of the shackers who joins me in the shack on a monday and a thursday usually because if you do then you will know coloring is really one of our favorite things to do isn't it in the shack but i don't i think right that we're going to dry. So this is going to work. Right, let's get the shadow down. We're doing exactly the same on the front as we did on the back. Right, so now let's get some shadow in here. Okay. And we use those white marks to get some shading. You know what's nice is if you're doing this, what you'll find is that the, the pencil... Here we go. Once you've used the Dorso oil and it's dried, when you go back over it with a dry pencil, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean. It's got a bit of purchase. It's got a bit of, it's like it, um, it's got a bit more traction. It, it, it's, yeah, this is going to be lovely. You, you'll know when you do this yourself, if you're not doing it with me here, you'll know exactly what I mean. Yeah. It, it kind of, it takes the pigment well after it's oiled. There you go. Look. Let's see if this is working. I've got to put it on the green to see. Oh, yeah. Hey, let's put it on the green and then I can see it better anyway. There we are. This isn't bad, is it? Because you see what you've got is you've got the you've got the shading on the back as well. You've got the shade. So you know where you're going. So you've already done it once. So you've got the hint of it. Don't want to overcook it. But by the same token, I want you to be able to see it as well. But it makes such a difference. This is the point of this whole exercise. And I know some of you must be going, you must be joking. Yeah, well, you weren't in Slovenia when she was doing the nose of the dog. <laughs> this is quick by comparison. 
Now, Linda and I are very, 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 we're best mates. So if I, if you think I'm ribbing her, I love her dearly. And anybody that knows us knows that, all right? <laughs> but she... Um, <laughs> I doubt whether she's watching because she's up to her ears in crocodiles, remember? <laughs> or she'll be watching because she just won't believe. <laughs> she'll want to have a go. Right. This will work. See, it's quite nice. Look. See, and then you sharpen your pencil and you can get in. Tell me you're not impressed. <laughs> Come on, tell me. Can I have a can I have a, a pat on the back for this one, please? Somebody pat me on the back. Right, so we've got a little bit of depth there and a little bit in there. And Donna, yes, I'm coming back to you again. You know, stipple first. Nah, stipple definitely first. Because otherwise, this is definitely stipple first, in my humble opinion. Because, should, are, we, are we assuming that that foot's in the snow and that's why it hasn't got a, a toe? <laughs> there you are. See, once you start working on the front, you get quite brave, don't you, Barbara? Mm. See? I know it's darker than Linda's. I'm cool with this, you know. I'm really chuffed with that. Really chuffed. There's Linda's. It's a bit lighter than mine, got to be honest. But to, co to compare is to paralyze. I think I just used the wrong greens. I think she must have used a lighter green. But it doesn't matter. It's good enough. It's all about the shading. So now... We've done, that was it. Can you believe all that, right, is to, to put that in there, and then that in there, that in there, like that. I know you're going to you say, well, how did we get to that? Well, we'll do that in a moment. Look, but isn't that lovely? I tell you what, I've got to be honest. I know his face, I haven't done his face yet. I need a fleshy colour, don't I? If he's... Let's have a look. Oh, hang on a minute. I could just use, I've got a pergoliner that's, and we've got a pergoliner that's a fleshy colour. Hang on a minute. Nah, that looks a bit pink. All right, we'll go with that one. Uh, now he's a bit orange. I don't think he's quite that orange. <laughs> hang on a minute. I don't want to spoil it now. Right, do you want to get pencil envy? You're going to get pencil envy now. Right. Although the peachy, the fleshy colour, I mean, flesh, it's all relative, isn't it? Where do you come from? Right. But let's just say for the sake of argument, I just need to do his face. Let's move my masterpiece to the side. Right. Pencil envy. Let's have a look. Where is my right ready okay pergoliners no polychromos yes look at this little lot look i know there it is but i just want to indulge the rest of my little collection look at that lot hey you see the thing about polychromos they also they work beautifully for any coloring so what have I got here? Light flesh. All right, we'll call him light fleshy. Right. And because I'm a colorer, inner, I like coloring, I have the polychromos. Right, so it's just his little face. So I'm guessing if I put a little bit of peach or flesh on that side, that's the back. There you go, that'll probably do it. There. That's that sorted. Because you only see his little face. 
So if I put that on there now, there, that wasn't hard, was it? Oh, and I'll tell you what else I haven't done. That was Linda's one. <laughs> Put a bit of flesh on my one now. I coloured your one in, Linda. Right. Okay. That'll do. Good enough. The depth. That'll do. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, we haven't got the grey on the sled. Look. Should we do that as well? Grey on the sled. Okay, stay there. Have pencils. We'll find grey. We've got a set, Paul. Do us a favour, just in case anybody's wondering. You don't have to buy 180 pencils to do this picture, right? But we've got a set that we put together. For, it was to do with the shack. And we've got like, um, I think they're like 12 pencils in a pack, the polychromo. And there are several greys so that you can do drop shadows. And there are also that fleshy colour. And there's an ivory and a cream and a gold, silver. The metallics are very good, actually. Um, and we put together a set of 12 because we thought that that might be really useful. Right. So I'm back on my one here. Am I on my one or my... Mine's... I'm so impressed with mine. I don't even know. Yeah, definitely this is my one. <laughs> I tell you what. That's that gives me joy. That gives me joy when I don't know whether I'm looking at mine or I'm looking at Linda's. I know. Should have gone to spec savers. <laughs> okay, come on. Stop larking about. We'll do the grey next. So we're going to do it on the back. Light grey. Because this is the the thingy me jig. The sled. Otherwise, it's, it's raw iron. It's transparent. So let's have a look. What grey am I using? I grabbed the first grey I could find. Cold grey three. That'll do. Cold grey three. And then we're going to go over the this area here. Yeah, that'll do. Now, we're not going to rush it now, Barbara, and spoil it. Having just spent the best part of one and a half hours colouring in a cape. So let's get a bit of grey going here. That'll do. Yeah, all right. Good enough. And what we could do, I bet we could repeat the whole thing. I don't know if I want to use a green one. Let me get another little nib. Let's see what happens if we do the gold, the dorso oil thing over the top. So we get that smoothed out a bit, okay? Excellent. And then in there as well. Zoom back in. Am I not zoomed in enough? I'm getting technical instructions from Paul here. What, zoom back in more than that? Or am I, am, am I, what am I doing wrong here? Right, that's that one. So while that's drying, let me find a darker grey. Dark grey. So we get a bit more impact. So I'm going to go to cold grey. What have we got now in my little stash? Cold grey six. A bit extreme. That'll darken it up a bit. Right, okay. Back in. So it's funny, when you use the oil, it's something that I'm realising, right? After you use oil, when you go back in, you have got more purchase, provided you let it dry grey, I reckon. It's interesting. Right, let's see. Okie dokie. So I reckon we could do a little bit more of the light grey in this area. See, and that's the thing. I can go over the top of the white. 
See if it changes it. No, you don't lose the white. Right. Okay. So, recap on this, how to get this, this effect. Because you, you know the artwork I'm, I'm talking about. We often see this, this beautiful colouring. Um, Francis Knott, Gail Sydenham, Linda Williams, these ladies do this immaculate colouring in where you've got no white line art like the groovy. And you think to yourself, I'll never be able to do that, don't you? Well, I do. I think, how do you ever get that done? Well, let's have a little recap. The way that we've done this, right, is we use, let, let me ask you some questions, see if you can tell me the answers or tell yourself the answers. You use, when you do the outline, the initial outline, let's check, let's have a little recap. Can you remember which tool I used to do the outside of this so that we don't have any white edge? Can you remember? Don't worry if you can't. I'm going to tell you again anyway. Smooth this out. I used the number three. Do you remember? I used the number three. And I bet if you talk to the traditional parchers, they might even use the number four. But I think it's important to see it. And on the subject of being able to see it, right, what was the next thing we did? Can you remember? Was it the stippling or the colouring? I know I'm asking daft questions and I know you know the answers, but sometimes it's good to reinforce these things, isn't it? Okay. What did I do next? Did I do the stippling? Or did I do something before the stippling? Do you remember? What did I do before I did the stippling so that I could see exactly where the stippling needed to go? Can you remember? That's right. I embossed, didn't I? I lightly embossed the area, these bits. Did I do it from the front or the back? When I did the, the, the little bit of embossing to show myself where to do the stippling. When did, where did I do that? Did I do that from the front or the back? Do you remember? That's right, I did it from the back, didn't I? And I used a large ball tool. And you could use the black mat with something over the top so it wasn't quite so bouncy. You remember? That's right. I used a, a piece of plastic, a plastic sheet, didn't I? Poly bag cut up. Or I used the pink mat, the excellent pink mat, right? So getting back to where we were as a recap, we did a little bit of white work on the back and then we did the stippling. But what did we, what did we use to do the stippling? What did I use? Can you remember? See if you can. Was it a one needle bold? Was it a one needle fine? Does it matter? That's right, it doesn't matter. As long as it's one needle something. So I was using, actually, I was using a one needle bold, I think. Yeah, I reckon. One needle bold. So it doesn't matter. As long as there's only one needle, it works. Right. Good. And what did I stipple on to? Do you remember? I used something. I didn't just stab straight into the mat, did I? Do you remember? I keep saying, can you remember? I know you can. Yeah, that's right. I used that. And that works really well. All right, so it's just a card, isn't it, with black on it. So that helped a lot when I was doing the stippling from the front or the back. Honestly, it's worth writing this stuff down because the next time you go to do it, you'll go to yourself. Did you stipple from the back or did you stipple from the front? She stippled from the back. Write it down. Just make a note. Honestly, you'll wish you had. I don't know how many times I've had to ring Linda Williams and say, do I stick it from the front or the back? <laughs> but now I know. Okay. Shall we add a little bit more? I want to add a bit of depth. So I'm on the front now. 
Okay, so we did the we did the I'm just repeating, aren't I? What I did before. Here we go. This is gonna be so nice. Looky looky. Um it does help if you like colouring, I have to say. Um, so when we got to do the colouring, we went on the back, didn't we? And we did one layer. I'm really chuffed with this. Do you know that? We did one layer, didn't we? On the back. And then we used the Dorso oil. And we used a sponge with a little drop of Dorso oil and a blending nib with or without the handle. Look, I'm really, I'm quite capable of doing this like that. It's easy. Just bear with us. Bear with us before we get these in. It won't be long, right? We try so hard, but some things are just not in our control. Right. And then... I just want to blend this grey. So then once we, we we did the blending, didn't we, with the Dorso oil. Yeah, I'm on the front now. Then we sharpened, because the Dorso oil, it smooths it out so nice. It stops it being granular, doesn't it? So this would be nice on the front. I reckon that will look really cool. Look, see a bit of graduation. See a bit of grading. When that's dry, I might even go a little bit darker down there. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, we forgot the little lantern. Grey. Um, so basically, with this colouring, you do two layers. You do one layer on the, on the back, and then you, you use your oil to smooth it over. If you want, you can take the same colour again and intensify the colour. I just only did one layer because I could see it was getting pretty dark, right? So once you're happy with the, with the overall coat, if you like, on the back, then you, sharp, you get a sharp, darker colour and you add your shadow on the back. You do it all on the back. Look, I can add more. I can add more if I choose to. Right, And then, once I've done that on the back, then I flip the whole thing over and I do exactly the same on the front again. So I take the lighter colour, I apply a light layer over the top, I dorse with dorso oil, I do the front again and I smooth that layer out, I let it dry and then, if I want to, I use a second coat, but I think one was plenty. And then once I did that, I really sharpened my darker pencil and then I went in and I added my shade, right? And that's how you get. And I honestly, once you've, when you do it, you'll understand what I mean. It's like once you've got dorso oil, a layer of that down, it changes the way the pencil sits on the parchment. It gives it a bit more purchase, a bit more grip, yeah? So let's have a look. It's 10 to 9. We've done that. This is two hours, friends, to do this little this little picture. But I think this is mission accomplished. And just, just put that to one side. And what I'm going to show you now, right, is just how we arrive at this piece here. If you... If you look at the finishing piece, because now you're going to capture this in here, aren't you? In there. But you're going to say to me, but how did you get this? Right, well, I'm going to show you. If we go back to the plate, right? Let's go back to the plate. But then I think we'll finish at nine o'clock. I think we've done enough, don't you? We go back to the plate. See this bit here and this bit here? Right. If I just bear with me a minute until I find this. Right, so I've got one that I started. If you see, see this here? It's here. Look, it's there. And this is there. 
So it's the opposite. It's the inner side. It's the inside. Let's have a look. It's the outside one and the outside one there, right? So what you're going to do is if you've got your green like this, let's get logical about this and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So this now, okay, is going to be the home for this. This is Linda's one, right? So if I take this, I can see exactly where it sits. So I'm, this is the back and this is the front. If I set that on there like that, then I know, don't I, that it's got to come over. Let's just think about it logically. In order to catch this, it's got to come over the edges. Look, you can see it's got to come over on that side. See, like there. You've got to at least be able to see that in there and this in here, right? It's quite robust once you have cut it out. Don't, don't worry that you're going to tear it, she said, famous last word. So you can see here, for example, it's got to overlap is all I'm saying. So let's not make a science out of that, right? That's my one. I know. I'm chuffed. Right. So let's take this masterpiece here. I'm going to lay it on the front. I'm going to turn that over. I can see exactly where that little girl's still sitting. I can see exactly where it's going to be. If I want to, see, I want to slide it away. I'm going to go up to the top for this bit. Do you see? So I'm going to hold that like that. I can see exactly where it is. I'm going to go right in the middle like that. Now, let me give you a clue. See the dots here? See these dots here? They, I'm going to, I'm going to tuck because I can see through the green. I'm going to tuck that. I know exactly where it's going. If I had to hold it like that, take that away, right? I'll take a, a groovy tab. Let's just get one of them from here, right? I'm going to take a groovy tab with my other hand, right? And I'll hold this in pl place, right? It moved. No, it's all right because it's just those two dots. As long as I look at those two dots, then I know that it's going to work. So I stick that down like that. Stick that down like this. So I'm on the back. See, because it's the shiny side. Then I can take this and I can see exactly. I can either look at it from the front or the back, but that you can you get my meaning. Then you're going to take your number one tool. You probably want to put a bit of tumble dry sheet, a bit of slick on that before you start. Right? Make sure. That you're on the right way, on the right path, and you're going to use if you want the outside one or the inside one, right? It's up to you. I think I'm going to go with the the outside one or the inside one. I'm going to use the inside one. I'm going to use this one, this one here, and I'm going to go from one side to the other. I'm not going to worry. So here, for example, right? I'm going to go like this. Don't take long. This, this is all I want to show you. If I do you, if I do you one side, like that. Don't rush it, Gray. So you do that, and then your dots. Maybe I'll use the the number two tool. I wonder if the number one tool. Well, that works as well. I'm always tempted to do number one or number two. Let's have a look. I think these dots are delicate enough that they can handle the number one tool without pu without puncturing it, you know. Looks to me like it's working. Right, there you go. So you can use the number two tool or the number one tool. Let's have a look. I think the number two tool probably gives you a better dot because it completely fills the, yeah, Let's do the number two tool. Have you ever seen Josie Davison whizzing round a grid? That's something to behold. She'd get done for speeding if there was a speed limit. 
There you go. So, Paul, is there anything we need to be telling our friends about what's coming up? Grace is in the room as well. Well, hello, Grace from New York. Lovely to have my daughter's company this evening. See, so we've done that. Now, when we lift this up, You turn it over, there's the beginning, see? And you do the same thing on all three sides. And that then becomes, see, you can either use pencil marks or just use the piece itself. But the idea is that you just give yourself, it's just got to be logical, just get it logic. So the this one here, for example, right? If you're, you're going down here on there, like so, right? And you can see you've got the dots again. The dots are your key. So up here, the dots are my key. The dots tell me exactly where to go. You see? So I take these two dots. So I use my dots. I'll make sure it's straight like that. I've got to turn it over, though, and make sure I'm working on the back. Okay, so I've got my dots. And then before I start, right, on this one, I'm going to make sure, if I if I go along that line there, I'm going to make sure I catch it. There you go. So I know it's going to work. I've used my artwork to catch it. Do you, do you follow what I mean? And, and I will secure this now. Right. And then I'll check and I'll check and I'll check again. So I've done that. I think I'm happy with the position, but just to be sure, I'm going to pop this over the top and I can see I'm capturing it there. It's bang in the middle. I've got it caught at that side. I've got it caught at this side and I've got it caught both sides. So now I'll go in and I'll do my, my fourth one on this. So in we go again. And we're using the one on the inside. This will be plenty. And the thing is, it's only a piece of parchment. If there's something wrong, you've only lost a little bit of parchment. Now, let me tell you what's coming up next week on television, our Create and Craft friends. On Wednesday, here's a date for your diary, Leonie, our darling friend Leonie, you know she's one of the Clarity crew, so Leone is uh, showcasing those magnificent art blocks, printing block stamps. She saw them uh, when, ah, oh, yeah, when she came down to the open days and she was working with us at the open days and she saw the beautiful printing blocks. She said, I love these stamps. I've got to take them on and let Leone loose. I said, be my guest. And so that show is kind of, it'd be lovely to see what Leone does. So let her put a spin on them. I think they're immaculate, these stamps. They're my kind of thing. They set me alight. Um, but if you're interested in that, Leone's on doing that at 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock on Wednesday. And then on Thursday at 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock, it's Tina with the Pergamano show. So we should be really busy because we're doing um, we're doing the retreats. Hang on, while I'm talking, I'm doing a bit of project completion here. Oh, look what I just found. But right, apart from the right. here we go. <laughs> Told you I had them somewhere. Nested square pico cutting set and oval nested ovals pico cut die set. They were the two. Right. I knew I had them somewhere. Yeah, so Thursday, P Pergamano show, 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And then on Saturday, again, it's Tina. We'll still be doing the retreat. So it's six days. It's three times two days. But Tina, she's helping us out. She's doing the Pergamano show. And then on Saturday, I think she's got um, 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Is it one o'clock or two o'clock, Paul? One o'clock. Uh, five o'clock on Saturday. She's got a wonderful show lined up then too. 
One o'clock and five o'clock, Paul says. So if we take, for example, we take a piece of, let's have a look. What do we want to do? Do we want to do it on black? Black's probably better for this job. I think black. White's good if we're using, let's have a look. And I want to show you how we're going to cut out these bits. Yeah, so we've got a bit of black foam. I think this is right. Then I'm going to use my two needle bold. So you can tell from the bottom. Is that the bold one? Well, I'll soon find out. And then what you do is you decide, right, if this is going to be where you cut out, you decide where you want to start. You don't want to cut all the way to the edge because otherwise it will just fall off, won't it? So what you're doing is you're just cutting to a point. Do you see? It's just to there and to there. So, for example, what we're going to do is take our... See, I love doing this stuff and I never get to it because we always run out of time on the television. So, for example... You can always add a bit more afterwards if you feel like it. I'm going to make, this is my logic, I'm going to use my one needle tool to make a mark. That's as far as I want to go, and that's as far as I want to go. So I don't want to cut out more than that. See, I'll just do one so you understand. If you're new to this, you want to know how you perforate, don't you? How you cut this out. Well... This is how you cut it out. If you're doing freehand like this, then you need a two needle bold tool, right? A two needle bold. And you'll see that the two needle bold, it has like one slightly longer needle than the other one. So what you're going to do, I'll show you. You're going to stay... We're going to cut this out. So you're going to go with a slightly longer one, the one that's protruding a little bit more, right? You can see you're going to go like that, one. And then you're going to cut across like that. I could do with my other glasses to do this. Right, and then you're going to go, let me get my longer one. See, I'm out of practice with this. I don't do this stuff very often. But it take your time, right? And then you... In you go. So you put the, the needle in the hole that you've just done with the second one, like that. Do you see? Put the hole in that one, and you lift it up, and then in you go. And then you go again, like that, and then you lift. So what I tend to do, I take my time with this. It's not a race. I'll go into that hole, right? I'm going to straddle that V now. And then I'm going to come down and then I'll go again and I'm staying as close to the white line and then I'll come up and then I'll push down. I don't need, I want to stay away. I'm getting a bit too close to the edge here, right? So there's a fine line. There you go. And after a while, you get into a kind, I don't know, I need some other glasses. I've got better glasses than what I've got on for this job. But the trick with this, it's not hard. You've just got to take your time, right? And you just get relocate and go again. And then you go along. And I know I watch the experts do this and they whistle round. But I'm I'm not I'm not whistling. I just want to get it nice. Right? And this is stuff that we never get to normally, isn't it? Right, like that. Round we go. Here we are. So you need a two needle bowl tool to do this job. Should we do it? Come on, let's finish it. And then when we've done that, I reckon we could call it a day. So when I've done this, I'm going to show you how to cut. So hands up. Who's good at pico cutting? And hands up, nobody's going to admit they're good at it. Everyone's going to admit they're rubbish at it. You watch. <laughs> it's the psychology of the crafter. Right. But what about, um, 
You see, the Peacoat dies, they're excellent for doing like the donkey work, but you'll never find a die that can do this stuff. So you this is something you want to learn, really. And it's not it's not that hard, really. It's just a question of practice and perseverance and taking your time. See? Take your time. I'm glad I made a little prick, a little pinprick there, so that a perforation, because otherwise I would have gone straight off the edge by now. <laughs> That'll do. Right. So done that, and we perforated from the front. See, let me put, what can I put behind it? Maybe a bit of white. Right, so let's come up tight. Hey, see the little holes? Right, so now it's time to cut. So let's have a look. It's getting really tight on this one and see if we can do this. I haven't done any cutting for a while, but it's like, it's like a lot of things, you you just, you remember, don't you? Once you learn, it's like riding a bike. First couple are a bit ropey, and then after that it gets better. So we've got three different sorts of scissors. We've got these ones, which are the ring lock. They're really tight, they're good. If you've got big fingers, these are quite good. Then we've got the snips, or perga something or others. What are these called, Paul? Perga cutters, I think they're called. Right, and these are these are great if you've got dexterity problems because you don't actually put your you don't use your fingers in in the scissors. You just just squeeze them like like tweezers really. So they're quite good. And then these ones, these are the exclusives, I think they're called. And these are my personal favourite. So this is what we're going to do. Let me just think for a minute. Right, so we're going to use the, this is all different ways. I've seen this done so many times in different ways. I can only show you what I do, right? And I learned this from Linda and from Tina Cox, both of, both uh, who are people that I follow, if you like. They are my, my mentors. And I watch the way they do it and I follow them. So you put your finger, your thumb in that one. And then I put my third finger, not this, not the index finger, I put that one and then that one. And then I've got my fingers like that, right? Right, let's have a go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the, see I, you can use a black mat. When you buy the scissors, you get a piece of this black mat as well. You go like that and then you snip. And then you, you go to the next one. And you just put the tips in and you go over and you snip again. So you just go in and snip. And then you go again and you just put the tips of the scissors in and you lean over and then you snip. When I started, I found it easier to put my finger underneath the artwork. And I know, because then you, obviously if you draw blood, you're going down in too deep. But I found that I was able to really control how far I went in to the, I didn't go in too deep because I could feel when you, when you go in, you can feel the, the, the tips of the scissors touching your finger. You don't, you're not stabbing yourself. You just, you can hear the click. Hang on. I've got the wrong glasses on, but I'm sure I'll get round this all right. My Dame Edna's are in the box ready to go to Ditton. <laughs> there you go. So let's see if it's working. Hang on. So you take your time, lean over. I find this very therapeutic of all the parching techniques I'd say I, I, I like this one I like them all but I like this one the best and it's one that I seldom get to 
Let's have a look if it's worked. Oh, yeah. There you go. So if I take a bit of black card, let me see if I can find a bit of black card, and then I can show you. Uh, I've got card everywhere now. Let's see if I pop this in here. There. So if I lean, if I come up tighter, see if you can see that. Or is that too? There. See the little snips, the little picos? Those are those little triangular picos, and that's what we're aiming for. See? There's another one. There. And once you've got them, you see? So just to recap, you make it like a spade, like a shovel, spoon, like that. Thumb in there, miss a finger, next one in, and then you use your other fingers. I use that one got a lot more control than you think and then for me when I was starting out I tended to hold it in my hand and also I think because I do a lot of demonstrating on television if we ever do get to this part of the deal it's easier to hold it to the camera you see than keep moving it like this for me it's easier There you go. So I hope that you've enjoyed this evening. I think it's been informative. And I reckon, see, once you've got, it's, it's nice to do. Right, there you go. So I've done my, I've got my, it's like a photo corner. It's like a posh photo corner, really, isn't it? But you're using the plate from the, the treasures. Paul, I want to ask you a question. Can you please tell me when the next release, that's what I want to know. When's the next, the, when are the next five plates being released on Creating Craft? Because most of our friends that are watching have obviously got the first five. So when are the next five being released? Could you let me know? And then I can, I can let everybody else know. You see, and then that's how it gets, you just pop it in here, pop it in. And you don't need to do all four. If you only wanted to do the two, you could do the bottom one and the top one. See, now, if it's like that, let me just see. If it's like that, no, it sits in there perfectly. But if I feel it's a bit, that's it, now I've got it. See, so you don't have to do, let me show you options. That's all four, which is like in here. There we are, right? And here we've got just two. So you could do just the top and the bottom. It would hold it in place. And then perhaps if you wanted, you could use a brad here and there. That would be nice too, wouldn't it? But it's very pretty, isn't it? So that's, that's it, my friends. That's how he ended. And it's the 25th, there you go, the 25th of August. And that will be a new and exclusive on Creating Craft. So that's going to be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon again on the 25th of August, which is probably a Thursday, but I couldn't swear to it. Paul will let me know. Um, and that's when we'll launch the next uh, five in this series so we're releasing five plates a month this is one of the first five and then the next ones are really beautiful and hopefully that you'll join us and then we'll announce the next craft along i hope that you enjoyed this evening and of course um yeah i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that you learned something and it was great hanging out together fab craft along Hope you enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Lovely evening. Thank you. Loved every moment. Well, there you go. That gives me joy too. Paul, thank you so much for your help. Linda, I know you're not watching, but I'm going to say it anyway. Thank you so much for everything that you do and for the immaculate, beautiful artwork and the wonderful designs, because there are literally thousands of people who just love you and love your artwork. And that's good to know, isn't it? So thank you again for everything. 
and um, and it's at 4 p.m. Thursday, the 25th of August. I was right. And if you're coming down to the retreats next week, safe travels, safe travels. See you Monday morning. And in the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. Go easy. And I think I'm going to go in and find my husband. Lots of love to you. I don't think I've forgotten anything except to say, Paul, thank you very, very much for your help at every level. Bye-bye now. Bye, guys. Ciao. I hope you enjoyed that one. Just leave it on there. There you go. I think I've made some Christmas cards.